Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Greek Memories of Asia for the Nintendo Switch. Now this is a beautifully hand-drawn puzzle platformer with Metroidvania elements that is releasing today, August 17th of 2021, and is going to be selling for $19.99 on the eShop. There's also a physical version that will be available and will be most likely selling around $39.99 at most retailers. Now I do want to thank Team17 for the review code for this game and just before we get started don't forget that if you do end up liking the content to please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now as we get started I do also want to mention that technically I could have put this review out before today. But for embargo reasons, I didn't want to be limited in any way of what parts of the game I could show you or discuss with you, reason why I held back till today. Now in this game, you start out as the title character Greek, the youngest of three siblings and member of the Corin people. Unfortunately, you find out quickly that the Corins have been victims of a long-running invasion from an imposing faction called the Erlags. You also find out that unfortunately your people are fighting a losing battle and they decide that they must flee their ancestral homeland. Now, As you start out on your adventure, you are quickly assigned what will be your main motivation for most of the game, which is finding your lost siblings and helping rebuild the airship that your people will need to escape. Although nothing revolutionary storyline-wise, everything is presented in an enticing fashion and tends to a sense of urgency. Beautiful cutscenes are also a nice touch and often communicate some heartfelt moments just like when you find your sister for the first time. By the end, I was actually caring about the plight of the three siblings as well as the other characters within your encampment. Now that brings us to the gameplay. As previously mentioned, you are quickly introduced to an encampment that operates as a hub with quest givers and supply replenishment. When you venture out into the environment, this is where you will recognize the Metroidvania-like layout of the other areas. However, as you play through, you will realize that the game more closely resembles a puzzle platformer than a Metroidvania. Objectives are often more linear in nature and focus on puzzle solving rather than exploration. Although you will have to explore at moments. Now you will also revisit a few areas as in metroidvanias with the help of your siblings to get access to new areas. However the gameplay is not focused around collecting abilities but rather your siblings and since there are only two that is why I say there are metroidvania elements however it is not what dominates the gameplay. Now to be clear this is not a critique because the puzzle experience is quite unique. But before you go in, I think it is important to set your expectations towards the puzzle-like gameplay rather than the metroidvania aspects. Now, with that out of the way, controls are very responsive and precise. The basic feeling of controlling each sibling is very similar. The way of traversing obstacles, however, is not. Now, all three siblings can wall jump. However, the brothers have access to a double jump, with Greeks being a little higher, while Adara on her end can hover in the air using her magical abilities. Raydel, the older brother, also has a grappling hook for puzzle solving reasons and to replace his smaller double jump. Now combat on the other end is melee for the brothers equipped with swords, Raydel's range being longer, while Adara throws magical projectiles. To compensate for the smaller range, Greek however has a crossbow. Now upgrades are available for each character, but technically they are optional, and the game can be finished without them, although probably not as easily. Now as not to ruin any of the puzzle solving experience, I won't go further into details, but each sibling also has a unique ability that gives them access to areas that the others cannot. Now where the game control might be hit or miss for some people is the way you have to control some of the characters simultaneously. Now you do have a couple of abilities to smooth this out, like an auto-follow command, and another where you can call your siblings to your side when you're close enough. And these commands do work well for flat surfaces or very slight obstacles. However, when traversing more complex obstacles, you will have to swap manually to each character and traverse it individually. 
Now, getting down the flow between switching between both types of controls will take some time of adjustment. But I will say that once you have it down, it works mostly well. And this is where the puzzle platformer expectation comes in, as it slows down gameplay, but for those who enjoy platforming, this slowdown won't be a negative, and you'll actually appreciate the realism of the sometimes complex nature of traversing terrain as two or three distinct individuals. Also, it's important to note that if any of the siblings die, including those that you aren't controlling actively, it is automatically a game over. Now, I do think that this aspect was very voluntary on the developer side and really shows you that although not being alone on your adventure can be seen overall as a positive, there are also some inconveniences. And as a real world side note, I think that anyone who's already traveled with younger siblings will definitely be able to relate here. Now visually, this game is stunning, and it's probably what will hit you first is the hand-drawn animations that are just beautiful and smooth, and with at least during my playthrough, no performance issues at all. The environments are also very engaging, although bleak at moments, and I love the slight glow all of your characters emit that give the feeling of bringing light to these darkened areas. And I can't help but make some parallels with the overall feeling you get while playing Hollow Knight. Although not as claustrophobic here, the feeling of being a tiny character in a huge world is very present. Now to back this all up, the live orchestra soundtrack is also quite amazing. Although it being mostly ambient in nature, if you do stop to appreciate it, you realize how much it's actually adding to your experience. Now, at this point, with a lot of praise behind us, you're probably wondering if I had any issues with the game. And although overall, I think you're getting that I quite enjoyed my experience, there were a few grievances. First of all, the lack of an area map was frustrating at times. You do have access to a global map showing how the different areas interconnect and that is also used for fast travel, but you have no map once in an area and on a few occasions had me going in circles very annoyingly. Secondly, this game has a playtime of about 10 to 15 hours depending on your proficiency for puzzle solving. Now, although this is respectable, I do feel like a couple of areas of the map were underutilized with only one visit and no real reason to go back. The quests also are very straight line towards the main story with very, very few side quests. I do think a couple of extra, possibly optional side quests revisiting these underutilized areas would have been beneficial, especially for those looking to extend their time in this great universe they created. Maybe we can hope for some DLC further down the road. And lastly, the biggest point for me, I found the boss fights underwhelming for the most part. And it was actually the only part of the game where I felt that the multiplayer control aspect didn't work well, and it actually felt shoehorned in rather than realistic. I ended up for most fights finding a safe spot to drop my siblings and solo the boss with whichever character felt best adapted to the situation. But this really didn't feel like the intended solution that the developers were going for. Now, overall, however, these downsides were greatly overshadowed by what I found to be a very satisfying and enjoyable experience through a beautiful yet bleak world helmed by a touching sibling relationship and compelling gameplay. The only thing I want to stress, as I mentioned earlier, is you have to go into this game expecting the slower paced puzzle mechanics of a puzzle platformer with splashes of action rather than the fast paced combat focused gameplay of most metroidvanias. So now it's time for the verdict, and if this is your first time watching the channel, the scale I use is down below in the description of the video. Now I'm going to give Greek Memories of Asia an 8.5, putting it on the higher end of a great game. For $20, I do find you're getting a beautiful puzzle platformer with gameplay very much along the lines of the Trine series or for retro fans, the Lost Vikings. And I actually became very close to giving this game a 9 if they could have only delivered on more satisfying boss fights. And as a final point, I enjoyed this game enough 
that I'm going to be buying a physical copy for my collection to support the developer. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think you're going to be picking up Greek Memories of Asia? And don't forget on the way out to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget the notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. As usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.